This video is brought to you by Skillshare. So it's been a weird week. I'm not usually the kind of channel that gets into like non-entertainment current events, but it would be weird to not acknowledge that, right? Millions of people are staying indoors as much as their job allows them, not just to help themselves, but for countless vulnerable people out there as well. So today, I thought I'd make a video about my favorite weird little subgenre of TV the ultimate celebration of hanging out inside, the bottle episode. Even if you've never heard the term, you probably still know what I'm talking about. Episodes of TV produced on the cheap, usually all taking place in just one set, give or take a setup scene or two. TV is an expensive medium to create, and adding an episode that's basically just dialogue in one location allows showrunners to save some of their budget as well as making production move much faster. Episodes that are not only cheaper to produce, but also much quicker are obviously hugely appealing to TV producers, so they've never really went away. Whether it's in early Doctor Who episodes like The Edge of Destruction, which takes place entirely on the TARDIS, or a modern show like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia's Charlie McDennis, which sees the gang spend an entire episode just playing one insane game inside the bar, the bottle episode has been a fixture of television for almost as long as television has existed. But when I searched for videos on them, one of the very few I could find was called Why Every TV Show Has a Noticeably Boring Episode. You know what? I'm here to change that because I love bottle episodes. I think they're part of the foundation that television as a medium was built on, and they tap into what TV can do so well, giving us interesting, funny, or really dramatic conversations between characters that we already know and love. Bottle episodes aren't something TV should be ashamed of, and when they're done well, they're far from boring, and that's why I think their history is worth digging into. Many online think that Star Trek was the originator of the bottle episode, since the show would famously save money by producing some of what the writers called ship episodes every year. Kirk, Spock, and the rest of the gang would spend their hour of TV on board the Enterprise for the entire show instead of beaming down to a planet, since those outdoor sets were a huge chunk of the show's budget. This gave us some of the most beloved episodes, like The Naked Time and The Doomsday Machine, but this kind of show definitely predates Trek. There was that Doctor Who episode I mentioned earlier, which is an early example in the UK. But in the US, the sci-fi classic The Outer Limits seems to be where the term bottle show came from. One of the show's producers, Leslie Stevens, was in a tough spot since the show was quickly running out of both time and money. So on a flight from New York to LA, he wrote Controlled Experiment, an episode that could be shot in four days and on the smallest budget in the show's history. Now, it had more than one setting, but it also only use the sets that the show already had standing. So he coined the term bottle show, saying, quote, when they know you can do it and you can do it fast, you become the fire department to bail the show out of trouble. It worked in the 60s and it definitely works now. Though I get why it might strike some people as boring, to me, the bottle episode is basically a part of TV's DNA. See, I think television's roots are really a strange fusion of the radio drama and the stage play. Many 50s TV shows literally started as radio shows, from soap operas like Guiding Light to anthologies like General Electric Theater and Ken-friendly shows like The Lone Ranger or, you know, Captain Midnight. You'll find that they really resemble stage plays too in a lot of ways. From the way they're shot to the way they're performed, it all feels very distinct from films, even movies from that era. TV is a medium where you're generally spending time with the same few characters week in and week out, and those characters are usually just as much of a draw as the storylines themselves, if not more so. Star Trek fans were willing to put up with some very bad stories here and there because the charming interplay between Kirk, Spock, and McCoy was usually still really entertaining and interesting. So of course scripts that almost totally focus on that kind of dialogue could create some really classic episodes. Characters getting a chance to just kick back and talk about their feelings, beliefs, and philosophies is part of what separates Star Trek the TV franchise in its many forms to the vast majority of Star Trek the film franchise, which are generally more action focused. 
And bottle shows, like the Deep Space Nine episode Duet, are the perfect example of why. They can be tense, emotional, and thought-provoking, with no action set pieces, and while staying on the set of the space station for the entire episode. For more recent stuff though, there's two really good examples that come to mind. Breaking Bad and Community. Now, okay, I should admit up front that Breaking Bad's bottle episode, Season 3's Fly, is probably the single most controversial episode of the whole show. Some people absolutely hate it. And I get why. Breaking Bad was a show that generally moved at a breakneck pace, packing in so much well-plotted and fast-moving story into a single season. And this episode is about Walt and Jesse trying to kill a fly. But to dismiss it as the boring episode is just crazy to me, and I definitely rank it among the show's very best. Breaking Bad usually moved quick, sure, but at its heart was the exploration of Walter White. And one of the most fascinating things about that character is how he was able to morally justify doing worse and worse things, as all of his excuses for doing them, cancer, financial insecurity, helping out his family, all slowly fell away. As slowly but surely, he was revealed to be just as narcissistic, brutal, and ego-driven as he always told himself that he wasn't. And Fly was a very important step in that journey. All of Walt's moral rot and disgust with himself comes to the surface, after pushing those feelings away for far too long. All of that takes the form of this obsession with ridding his lab of this single fly. Guilt weighs heavily on Walt here. It hangs over every conversation he has with Jesse. But when the moment finally comes, and he has a chance to confess what he let happen to Jane to his partner, he takes the easy way out. He faces no consequences. And in that final shot, a fly and all the guilt that represents literally still hover over him. It's an amazing piece of writing, much like Deep Space Nine's duet that I mentioned earlier. But one big difference between many older Bottle episodes and Fly is that it's still a really good-looking, well-directed hour of TV. Now this isn't to say that DS9 had bad direction or anything, because I don't think that's the case. Just that Fly breaks the conventions of the Bottle Show subgenre by refusing to go with the conventional TV style that allowed those shows to shoot episodes so quickly. Fly is really visually stylish, and works in the spirit of the super dialogue-heavy, character-driven drama of The Bottle Show, and that's a big part of why it'll always be one of my favorites. Then there's Community's Cooperative Calligraphy from Season 2. Again, one of the show's single best episodes in my opinion. Like Fly, the story is driven by an obsession, to find Annie's pen, who has finally gotten fed up with lending everyone her stuff and never getting it back. This sets off an episode that basically all takes place in the study room, as every single thing the group has been holding against each other comes out all at once, turning it into a huge fight. Dan Harmon, who would go on to create Rick and Morty, a show that also did an incredible bottle episode, I think is just really, really talented at finding psychological depth to characters that might have been really two-dimensional in most sitcoms. And I think that's what makes his shows a perfect fit for this format. A bottle episode can only be as good as the characters' conversations in them. And Community does a great job here of exploring aspects to its cast that we hadn't seen yet. And in true Community fashion, it's very self-aware, with Abed declaring it's going to be a bottle episode from the very beginning. But that doesn't rob the show of its emotional stakes for its characters, and I think that's a really tricky balance to pull off. In the end, I feel like I love bottle episodes because I love television, and the things that make it unique from film. Spending time with characters you find funny or interesting every week is just what sets it apart from movies. And bottle episodes emphasize that even more by cutting away most of the plot, action, and settings of traditional episodes. We're just left with the humor, tension, and drama of watching a few characters have conversations with each other. And whether that's used in a light-hearted way, like Seinfeld's Chinese Restaurant, which is an entire episode about the gang waiting for a table to open up, or for some really dark character exploration like Fly, it all boils down to the dialogue and the actors' performances. And since it's characters, first and foremost, that connect me to a show, the bottle episode format is just a natural fit. 
Now, clip shows are an old TV staple that I could do without, but bottle episodes will always be the farthest thing from boring to me. You know, like I said, it's been a weird month for everyone, to the point where I feel a little goofy continuing to make videos about like random pop culture stuff that I like talking about, but I also figured that people could kind of use more things to watch now more than ever. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and more importantly, I hope that you have a safe week filled with a lot of hand washing and fun rewatches of your favorite shows and movies. Oh, and if you're interested in learning new skills you can use from your home and helping out this channel, definitely check out How to Make a Podcast, Plan, Record, and Launch with Success on Skillshare. Taught by a pro podcast producer, this thing dives right into everything you'll need to know about launching a podcast, from microphones to the business angles. And that's just the tip of the iceberg if you want to start learning some skills that could really open up new doors and opportunities. There's tons of great courses on animation, marketing, entrepreneurship, and more. Skillshare has thousands and thousands of courses to pick from, and an annual subscription is less than $10. The first 500 people to go to the link in the description description below will get two months of access to those classes free. Start learning by going to skl.sh slash Captain Midnight 30. That's skl.sh slash Captain Midnight 30. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started. Because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.